Hello everyone, I'm Jesse Mason, and in this installment of Teach Me, we take a look at banked turns and how an advisory speed limit is determined when the geometry of the turn is known. Here we're given both the inclination and the radius of the turn. Armed with these two pieces of information and a little physics, we're going to determine the rated speed for this turn. The rated speed, by the way, is the speed for which friction is unnecessary to maintain a constant turn radius. In other words, if a vehicle hits a patch of ice at this speed, it will not slide off the road, but rather remain on the intended path. As always, we begin by drawing a picture. Our picture will show the turn is viewed from above. We use our coffee mug here to make sure it looks nice and circular. Why is our turn circular? Because the given radius is constant. To make this a little more realistic, we'll depict our vehicle entering this turn from a straightaway and exiting the turn to a straightaway. Here we'll mark the center of the turn, C, and label the radius of the turn, R. Finally, we'll draw our vehicle in mid-turn. Below, we'll note that R represents the radius of the turn. At the moment, we have the vehicle traveling upwards, so this vector arrow will represent the vehicle's tangential velocity, which is just a geometrically correct way of describing a body's instantaneous velocity while undergoing uniform circular motion. Lastly, we'll indicate the direction of the centripetal acceleration of our vehicle. Oops, forgot an arrow. Now, a couple forces are acting on our vehicle, keeping it in uniform circular motion, and that means we need a free body diagram. Since we're moving clockwise around the turn, the road, as well as the vehicle on the road, will be inclined clockwise as well. Our FBD, of course, shows our vehicle here from behind. To make this view a little clearer, we'll give the vehicle a license plate. And maybe some taillights will help. <laughs> or maybe it just looks like an angry robot now. No, disassemble number five. Anyway, the two forces acting on our vehicle are its weight and the normal force applied to the vehicle by the road. Now, these two forces are not perpendicular, so it isn't completely obvious which coordinate system is most convenient to use. Motion analysis, vis-a-vis -vis Newton's second law, is always simplified by choosing a coordinate system such that one axis of the coordinate system, here it's the x-axis, is aligned with the body's acceleration vector. Since our vehicle is undergoing uniform circular motion, the acceleration vector is to the right, toward the center of curvature. Now that we've assigned a coordinate system to our free body diagram, we can break any oblique force vectors into their x and y components. So here's the y component of the normal force, and the x component of the normal force. We'll call this angle theta, and it turns out that the angle between the normal force and the weight vectors is equal to the angle of the incline, so we'll label this theta as well. So theta is defined as the angle of inclination, which is a known value, so we write equals 15 degrees. Now our turn radius is also given to us in the wording of our problem, 100 meters. The tangential velocity is the rated speed of our turn, which makes it the unknown variable. Our task is to determine its value. Finally, the centripetal acceleration is not given, but its constancy is implied by our definition of rated speed. Maintain a constant turn radius. To maintain a constant turn radius is to undergo uniform circular motion, which implies a constant centripetal acceleration. And that does it for our knowns and unknowns. As mentioned previously, and forecasted by our use of a free body diagram, we will be analyzing the vehicle's motion using Newton's second law. Given the multi-dimensional aspect of its motion, we'll analyze each component of its motion and its causes separately. So here we'll start with N2 applied to the X direction. So we have the sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to the product of its mass and its acceleration in the X direction. Here the acceleration in the X direction is equal to its centripetal acceleration. So we'll set A sub X to A sub C. Summing our forces in the x direction, we have just n sub x, the normal force in the x direction. So we write n sub x equals m a sub c. Now trigonometrically, n sub x is related to n by a factor of sine theta. So we can write n sine theta equals m times, and we'll write the mathematical definition of centripetal acceleration here, the square of the tangential velocity v sub t 
over the turn radius, r. Solving for v sub t, we get v sub t equals plus or minus the square root of n, r, sine theta, divided by m. Now, I didn't actually write the plus or minus symbol because only the positive value for v sub t makes physical sense here. So it's not like I just forgot to write it in, okay? Okay, moving right along. We would like to have an expression for n here. So we'll label this equation one and then go look for that expression using Newton's second law in the y direction. So we have the sum of the forces in the y direction equal the product of the vehicle's mass and its acceleration in the y direction. Now, how might acceleration in the y direction occur in a vehicle rounding a banked turn? It would appear in the lateral movement of the vehicle, up or down the incline. But since our vehicle is maintaining a constant turn radius, its position on the incline is fixed and therefore is not accelerating in the y direction. So we can set a sub y to zero. Summing the forces in the y direction, we get n sub y in the positive y direction and the vehicle's weight in the negative y direction equals zero. Here, n sub y is related to n by a factor of cosine theta. So we can write n cosine theta, and we're going to move weight over to the other side and use its mathematical definition, equals mg. Solving for n, we get n equals mg over cosine theta. And we'll label this equation number two. So now we insert equation two into equation one, and we get v sub t equals the square root of mg over cos theta times r sine theta divided by m. The m's divide out, revealing an interesting physical insight about rated speeds, and the trigonometric functions combine to give us tangent theta. So we're left with v sub t equals the square root of gr tangent theta. Inserting our values for gr and theta, we find out that the tangential velocity of a body undergoing uniform circular motion around a banked curve of these specifications, and therefore the rated speed of the turn, is 16.2 meters per second, which works out to be about 35 miles per hour. Which, given our values for r and theta, makes sense. I'm Jesse Mason. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any suggestions for future Teach Me videos, or just want to say hello from your part of the world, please let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, happy learning.